Welcome to the Kafka's View. No rant today. Today it's the press conference. Today is the day where we talk about Chelsea versus Manchester United. Here we go. Guys, the result against Sevilla was not a good one. Let's not beat around the bush. Nil-nil at home, Champions League. It's not following the Mourinho formula. Win the home games, draw the away games and you're fine. So now Frank has got a press conference against Manchester United. Then we'll talk about the predicted XL and we'll talk about my predicted scoreline. Enjoy. So you guys can do me one massive favor. Hit the like button if you haven't already. It really helps, especially if you're a regular viewer. Look, I'm getting thousands of views, right? But yet, I'm only getting 100 likes. Help a brother out, please. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and keep it interactive below. And you guys have been smashing that. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really enjoying talking to all of you. Manchester United this weekend, I'm not gonna lie to you lot. I'm nervous. Manchester United beat PSG and we play into Manchester United's hands. We're going to dominate the ball. We're going to try overlap them. We're going to try overwhelm them. We're going to try play like a big club. They're going to sit back, take the pressure and hit us on the break. I don't trust us to win that way. So I need my gaffer, Frankie, Frankie boy. Give us a good press conference today, mate. And explain to us why we should be confident. So, first off, he had to answer about team news. No injuries. No injuries to any of the good players. So, nobody's injured apart from the hologram. Hologram, I mean Kepa, I'm sorry. Kepa is out of the game. He's got a shoulder injury. Peter Cech does not make the squad. Yes, you heard that right. Peter Cech does not make the squad. He's not match fit yet. But Peter Cech will be in contention soon. Other than that, it's a full fit squad. So important for me because all of a sudden Zayac is available, Pulisic is available, Havertz, Werner, Hudson, Adoy. It looks great. Hopefully, we don't see a certain somebody on the wing who we don't want to see. No names are mentioned. But otherwise, fully fit squad, I'm excited. My predicted Excel is going to give me a lot of options. Frank was asked about the confidence and are we restoring it? Well, the 0 0 draw, he says it's a good result, but. It's not a negative and then it's not a positive. Somewhere in between. Frank is very good at doing this. He is very articulate. He's very good on camera. As a player, he used to do these all the time. So he knows how to play the media with his fingers. So I don't take this too seriously. Because straight after the game, he said it's a good point. But now he's saying we don't need to get away. It's because he saw the backlash on Twitter. He definitely goes on Twitter. Him and Jody, both of you. You know, when you Twitter fingers, 100%. They check out what is said and he uses that as ammunition and as like targets on what he should and shouldn't say. He even spoke about Manchester United and they are very unpredictable. I agree with him on this situation. They're a very good side and yes, they're not on the richest vein of form. Yes, they don't have world-class players at the moment. But they have got some cracking players in some department. Bruno Fernandes, Paul Pogba... Anthony Martial, Rashford's decent. Like, when you actually deep it, they have got a very good compilation of good players. And if you get the right manager, he could unlock one heck of a team. So for me, we need to be very cautious and we need to be aware of what we're going up against. Of course, we need to represent because we are Chelsea. But we need to, at the same time, just understand what we're going up against. He was asked that there's no runaway leader. And is the league open? Look, the league is available for all of us to win. This is what Frank said. And he said, it's, there's no runaway leader. And it's true. But we need to improve. There is a chance of us winning this league this year. Don't call me deluded. We have got the squad. There is no outstanding team because Van Dijk is down. Man City don't look like they're going through the gears. And we have got the attributes to win it. We've got the firepower. We've got a good defense. We've got a cap again and all of a sudden check is back nah, that's that was better for the last one but we have a good team if we're positive and if we believe and if our manager makes the correct decisions there's no excuse for us to get 90 points like we should be beating a lot of teams west brom and southampton shouldn't be happening that's the press conference finished now we need to look at the most important aspect the prediction what do i think a draw peeps i see a draw again i'm not gonna lie to you I think the best case scenario in this case, Manchester United away is going to be a draw. I try to be positive. I really do. But I'm very cautious as a person when it comes to 
just predicting the score lines. I, I don't have belief in this team as of this year where they can go to Manchester United and dominate. And part of the reason why I don't believe that is because Manchester United are on a high from being PSG. They can play the exact same way again, and yet we aren't on the richest vein of form. So we're going to have to open up a difficult defence, and they are potent on the counter-attack. Beautiful for them. Like, they're going to have Edison Cavani and Rashford up top, most probably. They're going to have Bruno in behind. Pogba's most probably not going to start, but they're going to have Fred and McTominay either side. Sit that back, five at the back. All day, every day, crosses coming in from Tellez. Wan-Bissaka's going to mark whoever was on the left wing out for, of the game for us. So I think it's going to be a 1-1. I think it's going to be a fairly decent game. And I think we're going to pummel them, but we won't score. And it'll, it'll be one of those where ah, we should have won that. I think it'll be 1-1. The predicted XI is something that Frank Lampard will do and not I will do. So the goalkeeper, in my opinion, is going to be Mendy. Mendy is phenomenal. Like, as of what we've seen so far, I said we cannot judge him too early because the compilations I've seen were scary, all right? But, so I gave him a clean slate. I was like, big man, let's see what you got. And you know what? He looks good. I'm not going to lie to you. And it gives me a lot of confidence. He makes the difficult stuff look easy. And... That's calm. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I have some of that. We'll keep having some of that. No problem. Mendy and goal. I'm a firm believer of winning your spot. And I think the way Rhys James performed against Sevilla, he deserves to retain his spot. He was good going forward. And more importantly, he has really worked on his defensive prowess. He is be better one-on-one. -on -one. He's switched on. He's, he looks more mobile. He, if anything, he looks more lean this year. And I'm finding that really odd. How? Because we've hardly had a preseason. So, like, he must have really got his diet in check. He must have really been concentrating hard on keeping the weight off and just being more trimmed instead of bulky. Like, I'm not calling him fat. I'm saying he was just very muscular. So... I think it's important that he gets the faith from Frank Lampard. For good performances, you will get rewarded and you start again. The centre-back partnership needs to be maintained. We need to go once again, in my opinion, with Thiago Silva and Kurt Zuma. For me, with Thiago Silva, I think class personified. Literally, class personified. The way he plays is beautiful. Like, capital B, big boy Defender, literally, so calm, so composed, everything's done at his pace, and he's just proven why he's world class. And then next to him, you have Kurt Zuma, and in my opinion, Zuma needs a partner like him. Look what he did with Kimpembe, and look what he did with Marquinhos. He elevated their game to the next level. If Zuma just concentrates on his game and doesn't concentrate on being a leader, he'll be a very good player. I'm very excited to see this development. Chilwell all of a sudden looks like a bargain. I'm not going to lie to you. When we signed Chilwell, I was worried about the price. And I was one of the most vocal people on this YouTube platform. When it came to Ben Chilwell, everyone else had backs it. If the club wants to do it, we're going to do it. No problem. We got you, gaffer. No, I say my thoughts. I'm, I'm one of those people. I might get it wrong. But at least I'm giving you my thought. I'm not just saying what needs to be said. Like, as in, what the company line is. I don't do that. I say my thoughts. And I was worried about that fee. And as of this point, is he looking so much better than Sergio Regulon? No. Regulon was 20 million cheaper. But, Ben Chilwell, you keep performing like this, the fee won't even be mentioned. So, he needs to stop. For me, Frank is going to go with N'Golo Kante in the middle once again. Look, N'Golo Kante needs to play. Manchester United can't handle press. Manchester United really struggle against teams that press them. Look at Spurs. And if they we win the midfield battle, we will win the game. I'm telling you now. Ingolo has to start. This is the game. Jorginho gets rested. We're going to get Mateo Kovacic back in the starting lineup. And he's going to have to do the Regista role. Personally, I would go for three in the midfield, but I don't think Frank has got any thought of mind to do that. I think he's going to go with Mateo, and he's going to ask Mateo to do the Jorginho role. We know that doesn't normally work, but let's see what happens. Personally, think that Hakim Zayic will get the start right wing for this game. Hakim will be that player. Hakim is a maverick. He does what he wants when he wants. He doesn't follow much instructions, and... He's smart enough to do that. 
Most of his former managers have said, this guy is a leader. He leads by example and he takes matters into his own hands. With the creativity that he possesses, it's going to be very interesting for me to see what he can do against that backline. Because Manchester United's backline is not the most mobile when you take into account Maguire's there and Lindelof's there. So you give time and space to Hakim and we're going to have some nice pings across. Number 10 world will be Monsieur Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz will be starting, my man Kai. He's been very impressive, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Even against Sevilla, I'm sorry. Even against Sevilla, he was one of the players that was getting on the ball, trying to do stuff. And for me, he cannot be the main source of creativity. He needs to be the one that pops it up here and there. So the mixture of him and Hakim Zayic is very exciting for me to see. I think there's a prospect of us having two fantastic creators. Very excited to see it. From the left-hand side, I think Mason Mount is going to get the run. Mason Mount's an interesting one, man. I'm not going to lie to you. The next manager that comes in when Frank goes, he will play Mason Mount and he'll play him in the midfield. And I guarantee you he's going to look absolutely class. But with Frank Lampard, he wants to insist to shoehorn him in wherever, whenever they're meant to be together. Shakirich vibes. You know what I mean? And in my opinion, it's a bad sign. I would rather maybe a hudson Adoy or a Christian Pulisic but I'm telling you, no, none of those three want the smoke of Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Aaron Wan-Bissaka, bro, he guards Eden Hazard out of games. What do you think he's going to do with these three? So for me, any joy we get is coming from the right-hand side. The left-hand side just needs to be a complementary, supportive role. I wouldn't base most of our attacks down that side. Up top is going to be Timo Werner in his German Jamie Vardy role. The guy is hot off two goals against Southampton. He's fresh and he's ready to go. And he's going to be aiming to get goals and add to his tally. What's it been? Five games, two goals. He's going to want to add two more to that to make it six games, four goals. He's the, that type of striker. He's going to be running behind. He's, we're going to be searching for him with Hakim and Havertz behind. He's going to be very good passing ranges. I'm very excited to see what he's made of. I would love to see the element of Hakim Kai and Jorginho in one team for Timo with those runs with Pulisic and Hudson Odoi on the wings, just like coming in. It's going to look very pretty, very nice. We need to make sure this happens one day. Not every day, Mason Mount peeps. Not every day, but Timo is going to be our striker. But those were my predictions of Frank Lampard's team. And as I said in the past, I genuinely believe this game is going to be a 1 1 draw. I'm on a hot streak, I got one game right. The severe game, so I want a hot streak of one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button. Like I said to you before, how is it saying I get thousands of views, but there's only like a hundred likes? That ain't mathin'. That math ain't mathin'. So help a brother out. <laughs> Comment in the comments below what you think the score's gonna be. Subscribe if you're new and like the channel. It really helps and goes a long way. I'm out. Peace. See you for the review tomorrow.